first glance, three-year-old Maya appears to be a perfectly normal little girl. She's confident, cheerful and mischievous. But when people spend time with her, they realise something's missing. Maya, can you tell me how old you are and where you're from? Her voice. Maya has selective mutism. Maya can speak, but in front of most people, she chooses not to. Would you like a fishbowl? Instead, she resorts to noises and gestures to communicate. <laughs> I think she started being selectively mute about a year ago. She stopped talking to people that were acquaintances of ours. If we bumped into people in the supermarket or wherever, she would just go quiet. Then close friends, she's just suddenly stopped talking to. And then within the last four months, she stopped talking to grandparents. Um, and in fact, everyone. You're not going to do a hickory dickory dock with me? No. Why not? Should I go home? What's baffled Maya's parents is that when she's on her own with her immediate family, not only does she talk, but she's an extremely confident and chatty little girl. Hello, Maya. What's your name? I'm, I'm, I'm an elephant. Is it fun to be an elephant? Yes. Look at this trunk. I found it very upsetting. Um, it, it's like people look at her and they think, well, can't she talk? Yes, yeah, she can. They don't see it. They just see this, this child that says nothing. Or grunts. Or grunts. And, uh, and that is a bit frustrating. And what are they looking for? A bear! A bear, that's right. The key factor about selective mutism is that children can speak fully and freely in one situation. That sounds like my elephant! But not in others. How come Pete is wearing a blue dress? Mutism has been thought of as being a phobia. Uh, um, the child has acute anxiety about the expectation to talk. When there's no expectation to talk during a car journey, Maya is extremely chatty and verbal. When I grow up, I want to be Cinderella and a tooth fairy. Do you? Until she realises that she's arrived at a family friend's home. Oh, we're at Auntie Janine's. We are at Auntie Janine's. And at that moment, she completely shuts down and becomes silent. When they're out and about, uh, they're constantly on their guard, looking. You can see the sort of watchful, wary uh, looks that they have, wondering if people are going to expect them to talk and put demands on them to talk. So what else are you going to do on your birthday? What else are you going to do on your birthday, darling? It doesn't make sense to me. I can't make sense of her having this condition. You used to talk a lot, didn't you? Shh! Why do you say shush? You have to be quiet. I have no idea how the next few years are going to be. What I'm concerned about is getting the right treatment for her. Do you think one day you'd like to talk to all these people? No. No? While Maya's parents continue in their search for treatment, another family who knows exactly what they're going through are the Hancocks. Their six-year-old daughter Louisa was selectively mute between the ages of three and five. Towards the age of three, I realised that something wasn't quite right. As soon as she went into a group situation with friends, she would remain silent. After extensive research, the couple found Alison Winkin's Selective Mutism Resource Manual invaluable. It's helpful to avoid eye contact, which is rather different from how you'd normally talk to a child who has difficulty talking, and to avoid asking them questions. It's very helpful if people offer a selectively mute child the opportunities to speak but not the expectation to speak. Sometimes when I'm talking to a selectively mute children, I say, oh, I wonder if you might be somebody who likes drawing or perhaps you'd prefer to do building. But I'm not expecting them to answer, but they just might. 
It took two and a half years before Louisa's mum finally noticed that her daughter was starting to show signs of improvement. It was a real breakthrough. It happened to be on a play date. Uh, we had one of Louisa's friends just around to play, as you do, and she shut the door behind her, which is not unusual. And I was downstairs, and all of a sudden I thought, I'm sure I can hear two voices up there. I went upstairs, I thought, that's Louisa speaking. She's talking to a friend. And for me, that was quite an emotional moment. Louisa's journey is testament that with hard work and support, this unusual condition can be overcome. I can't imagine to talk, stop talking now, um, as I now a chatterbox, so I don't think I'll ever stop talking again.